from any of the alive defenders, so it's not relevant in this engagement. The Clash doing a lot of work here with the electricity, and there's nothing really that can be done by the Thatcher other than the rush, and he's doing just that. But can he get it? Oh. No! Renshiro with excellent cover! The Flash is one of the operators that satisfies quantum superposition. She's overpowered and underpowered at the same time. If you want to collapse the state of Clash being overpowered, then you will love this video because we'll go over so many Clash threats. We'll start with the very basics, and for that reason I have put timestamps. Clash is a free armor one speed operator that excels in a stack. She brings a very strong secondary gun. It has very low recoil and nearly 1000 rounds per minute. Out of barbed wires versus impacts, it's down to the team. In the top right corner you can see comparisons between secondary defense gadgets. Clash's main ability is a bulletproof indestructible shield that can electrify anyone within 13.5 meter distance. It slows down attackers as well as deals 5 damage per attack. If multiple attackers are close to each other, then all of them will be slowed down. Be careful because you cannot taste them for the entirety of the time. You have a cooldown the moment you waste all of the fuel. Since you will on the majority of the time be on your shield, you won't be able to shoot back, therefore Clash needs a teammate around them. Playing Clash in solo queue is a death wish, don't do that to yourself. A frag grenade or any other explosion will knock a bit of your shield making you vulnerable, as well as if someone mullers you. Frag grenade will deal 23 to 27 damage if you're facing the shield onto it. If Zofia stuns you, turn on the left side for a bit less than 90 degrees and look at the floor. The reason why looking at the floor is a bit better is to pull the shield a bit more up. Let's talk more about Clash and straight into the Pengus clip. Ash is close on me. Two guys close on me, Sophia as well. Uh, Ash is on my, in my room on the right hand side, slashing me. They might push here, might push here. I'm watching, I'm watching. Ash on my door. Right there, Dead, right nice. Jump in wall, in wall, in wall. Take yeah. The biggest reason why Clash can be broken is the same reason why passive angles are broken. Passive angles are held in a way that whoever holds the passive angle will be the one that will peek first. Therefore, they are deciding when to start the gunfight. And finally, they will be the ones that will be pre firing. Flash enables everyone on your team to have passive angles in all situations. In Pengu's clip, you could have seen Rook holding a passive angle onto Ash. Also, in this clip, you could see the correct way of playing Clash. Don't be a chicken. You have a giant shield with you. No one can kill you instantly unless you screw up something. Pengu was by the door towards Sofa, just like how Clash is situated right now. If I try to melee her, she will go slightly bit back, so Rook could easily kill me. You shouldn't be afraid of being melee if you have the team behind you. If you don't have a team behind you, then just don't play Clash. Melee is not a counter to Clash, unless in a 1 vs 1 situation. In 1 vs 1s, you will most likely want to be on your secondary gun, unless in a specific situation, for example, if you can win on the time. Speaking about the counters, is Capital hard counter to Clash? Let's take a look at another Broly clip. They're happy to adapt and happy to change things on the defense and they won't get away with just doing the same thing. We can see Clash now in astronomy going to take damage from those asphyxiation bolts, but Fabian's footwork is good, like a ballet dancer manages to just move. Sure, Capital can and will force Clash out of an area, but if you know what you're doing, then he won't damage you by much. The issue can be if you're too much focused on something and then Capito comes out of nowhere, isolates you from going by with the firebolts. And that could happen in the Oregon's attic. There's no reason to play this aggressive on attic if you can be playing in the tarps and call it a day. I have picked this example because you can go to another Twitch clip, but before that, also consider what Smoke is doing and how the attacker is afraid of pushing out Clash, 
just because of the possible pain. Now we see this dance between a clash in a one versus one as we see so many times. You can spin yourself about 90 degrees to the right and still have the shield, even though it's been knocked away from your body, facing off against the defenders, or against the attackers, sorry. And you can waste so much time in that instance. It's so enjoyable to see when a player does it well. In this clip, several stuff happened. First of all, Flash was on the solid floor, therefore you cannot push her away from below. Another thing is, if she's going to be stunned by Zofia, then half of all that people like to call the pit will most likely cover her from being exposed. Which is another interesting method to have in mind. You always, as Clash, and when possible want to be behind furniture that covers your feet or body, such as on front against maintenance or boiler's push. Be behind the wall, and Zofia's stun cannot do anything to you. If you cannot do that, then having Clash behind a soft wall with a head level angles will do the trick. This is especially handily on the borders lockers against the CC push. We are not done with this clip yet. Smoke plays interestingly. He doesn't care nor watches Clash's angle, because he doesn't need to watch it. He's watching vertical angles from green towards kitchen. The moment he should be picking attic is when the Clash gets in danger of being melted and when she starts to slowly go back, similarly to the villa's example. Till then, he doesn't need to care about anyone in the attic. With this in mind, let's take a look at the closet's villa hold, and look what clash is facing, and how five attackers are occupied with just one clash. Baby, yeah. what are you gonna get? Better Twitch TV. Anyway. <laughs> Trying to get the man out of the uh, walk-in closet there, and, well, they've realized that there's more pressing things, aka the clash on the landing side. You can see a lot of vitality outlines and bodies steadily droning and making their way here across the side. This was the start of the push last time. This was the start of the pressure when they dropped the clash and then went from this point onwards, and it looks like they want to double down. But clash... She's not playing that game this time. I wanted to point this because Clash can be used as an operator to stall attackers so your defenders can switch focus. The closet hold heavily denies bedroom push. However, games and aviator push are not contested. With Clash there, now they can be, and all of your defenders can rotate safely. Do know where Clash especially shines? In the last minute. Let's take a look at the clean sweep from G2. Notice Jaeger in 90. How many drones are still left? They have five drones available to themselves. Six drones actually on the likes of VB. There should be enough to drone out these last players of G2 in his last dying seconds. But the defuser will be dropped down. Citizen is going to be able to shut him down. And that means that right now VP needs to make a decision. Are we going to recover that defuser? Or are we going to be going for these kills? And with this clash playing on this hallway, it is going to be ever so much harder for them to do so. G2 might have found a way to completely shut them down now. Is it going to be enough though? These last 10 seconds will tell as W2G hopes to enter the side, but he will go down. Pasha will be taken down as well. Virtue with the cover is the 360 from the clash, but it will not last. How, How would you pull this clash? Jaeger has a passive angle onto long, and anyone from game school prefer you, and you have a barbed wire in front of you. It's important to position yourself as clash against Zofia well, because in this clip, but as well as in all other clips, Clash was close to the cover that if she's Zofia's and if she's going to be stunned, she can immediately go to save cover. And in this Villa's example, it'll be back to games. Our Gu Mino, and Mr. Pence is skin. Now it's going to be a combination of IQ and Zofia, together with Zofia, to stun. Clash shines on maps with long hallways or huge rooms where from attackers cannot take from multiple directions. The reason why Distance is her favorite tool is because of the two reasons. The first one is that the attackers could be picked from the multiple angles. And the second thing is, it's going to be harder for the attackers to zoo and shoot you. Having said this, it's very important to highlight how playing close is very strong as Clash, as we could previously see, and as we'll be able to see the Oregon's clip. Patriots are trying to put across. Well, I was going to say, maybe they would have to be aware of magnets that are around there that would prevent the Sophia from being able to hit onto the Clash, but in fact, it didn't look like that was so much of a problem. And Rafal's... Notice how many defender angles are facing Bunker. There was an angle from the tarps, from pillars, Shaiko, and possibly someone stuck in this corner, which isn't rare to happen. 
this for all or passive angles. Good luck beating that. So BDS did beat it once or twice. What do you think is one of the best combo with Clash? And only duo combo. Vigil. Let's take a look at the Pro League clip once again. <laughs> this is just cyberbullying like this if you're just gonna sit up there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, let's just uh, talk a bit of business then because this tournament. The reason why Vigil and Clash combo is great is Vigil cannot be drawn out. Therefore, the passive angles work even better against coordinated teams that will drawn out. Also, in the clip, you could have seen some bullet holes towards the admin windows. Clash is also great at forcing people to tunnel vision. You will be surprised how many times pro players wear tunnel vision just to deal with that clash. You don't believe me? Well, off we go. Creation office has to deal with the clash though of Pangu, who's slowly moving himself around. White Shark gets the kill too, you know? But hey, here we go. There is Pangu suddenly. It's gonna be Kanto with a double kill as he took down both Falco and White Shark. And Speaking about combos, I'm sure that you have heard of the Clash and C4 combo. You literally can do this in every traffic area, such as around border when defending reading and far base. You could also have guessed how Villa is an extremely Clash friendly map. You could also have guessed how Villa is an extremely Clash friendly map. But let's take a look at the novice way of playing Clash. Dog by Trophy and Clash in Statuary and Bedroom. They can actually utilize that to their advantage, but a C4 is used to destroy the air jab on the master doorway, and that allows Kendra a bit more freedom. Empire a little bit more space. I say that, but Scythe is going to be going down as Safe secures that kill onto him. So things are still at the advantage here for Na'Vi, and you, of course, have that all-important clash still standing. The only thing is, you have to be aware there's not as much... For Dark Zero, that they like to open up head-level angles just for the clash, to be able to see more area factor will be very important when the actual site take comes out. Hotton's playing a very... These are all small details that when you put all them together makes a huge difference. Clash also can be playing in the positions to destroy utilities such as Hard Bridge and the Shower Swall of Oregon. Especially important against Hibana since you cannot impact trick her. Here are a few more random tricks that you could use as Clash. The Lens can't get his concussions inside to cancel that bandit trick animation from Uno. Uh, you saw it first on APAC, but G2, they've been taking notes, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying this? to knife the shield out the way. <laughs> I tell you what, Luna, this is a shout out to you, my brother. <laughs> Big love for APAC. They can't move him out the way, so this means nothing can get through to interrupt this electrification. They are at serious risk of wasting so much time if they can't make this work quickly. More support I'll stuff start burning coming this season as well. So, Maybe that's uh, that, that's gonna help Fnatic a little bit with the adaptations that needed. Lunar Metal is the what? This is the counter the Zafia trick. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most 200 IQ play I have ever. Also, I can mention you can be somewhat countered by Thatcher or Switch, but they are still not a huge counter to Clash. I don't think I can finish up this video without mentioning the 20 seconds meta with Clash. Clash will waste a lot of time and a lot of resources to taking her down. Here is another fun clip from Clash on the bank. A small detail before this window end. Notice how Clash is moving away from the stairs so the attacker has to focus on multiple angles rather than just the stairs. Alright, there's going to be a stun and our... No, he gets, uh, he gets stunned at the same time. But come on, please destroy the frag grenade. Sloppy is going for the peak. There is Ella right behind. And that is going to be a kill as Goga finds yet another kill here. Switches to the pistol. And Sir Boss, he needs to watch out. <laughs> He's all alone here. And Makers, what a failed round. As uh, Ella is right behind the corner. And no more bullets in the SNG 11. Really unlucky. And Goga with three kills.